Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. In this video, I'll be talking about how to answer those difficult exam style questions where you're not really sure what strategy to use. So it's become a bit of a meme that in class you learn one thing and then the homework's a little bit harder and then the exam, the questions in the exam are just completely different to anything you've learned and your teacher hasn't taught you anything that comes up in the exam. Sometimes there's reasons for that because obviously your teacher doesn't write the exam, they don't know what questions will be in the exam, they can only do their best to prepare you for that. Uh, the exam boards write the exams and essentially they can put whatever they want into them. Um, they can completely change the types of questions they use, they can do whatever they want and they don't have to know what you've learnt. It's up to you and your teacher to figure out what they are going to put in the exam. It's a difficult thing to deal with, to be assessed by people that have never taught you and they don't know what you know. But obviously we have the curriculum, we know what should be in the exam and we can do our best to prepare ourselves for that. And usually teachers are pretty good at preparing students on the content that will be in the exam. But the problem occurs when the questions are worded and structured in a different way to the way they've seen them before. So you may know the content, you may, for example, know how to use the cosine rule, but it, in a different context, if you're not aware that you need to use the cosine rule, maybe you can't find the right strategy to solve the problem. So in this video, I'll be talking about how to get to that strategy in an exam situation and how to practice and prepare yourself for that. So the first resource I want to look at is this website and it's called SSDD Problems. SSDD stands for Sur Same Surface Different Deep Structure Maths Problems. This is a website by Craig Barton. You may have heard of him before. He's a maths teacher. He creates lots of different resources and websites for GCSE students. And this website is all about recognizing what strategy you need to solve a particular problem. So here he has a bit of an introduction and it talks about what are SSDD problems. It goes into a bit more detail here and it says SSDD problems are the special type of problem based on the observation by Roa, Dedrick and Burgess, a paper they wrote, that the correct solution to most mathematical problems involves two steps. Identify the strategy needed to solve the problem and then successfully carry out that strategy. Okay, so the, the main idea behind this website is that typically in a math lesson, let's say you're doing a math lesson on Pythagoras' theorem, the, the teacher will introduce Pythagoras' theorem, it, he, he may explain how to use it, give an example problem, and then you go ahead and solve some problems yourself. So it doesn't matter how difficult those problems get, you know that you're going to have to use Pythagoras' theorem eventually to solve those problems. And that's different to an exam situation where you are not told what type of strategy is needed to solve the problems. And that's where I think the issue for most students is in that in a class situation, they're told the strategy and they just need to implement the strategy. Whereas in an exam, you, you need to recognize the strategy and then use the strategy. So this website is really good because it's got a load of problems. Here's an example of a problem, which it doesn't tell you the strategy you need to use. You need to recognize which strategy to use. These are problems that look similar to each other. However, they all need different strategies. So here's some problems about a triangle. So the first one says find the length of the marked side, give your answer to three significant figures. Then the second problem says find the length of the marked side, give your answer to two decimal places. However, in this first one we're given two angles and a side, and then in the second one we're given two sides and an angle. And then the third one says find the area of the shape below, given two sides and two angles. And then the last one says, 
the ratio of a to b equals 3 to 5, write an expression for the length of side c in terms of a. So you can see that they kind of get a bit more difficult. This last problem is definitely the most difficult. And they all use different strategies. So on this website also the solutions, the work solutions are provided. And you can see the first problem you needed the sine rule. The second one is the cosine rule. The third one is uh, the sine rule for the area of a triangle. And the last one is the cosine rule again after rearranging that ratio in terms of A. This is a really good uh, resource for helping you to recognize the strategy needed for the question, which in an exam I believe is one of the most important things you need to solve the problem. Okay, so what I want to do is look at an example from the practice sets, the Edexcel practice set. So this is uh, an exam question taken out of practice set uh, one, I think. And it says, the diagram shows a tetrahedron. AD is perpendicular, perpendicular to both AB and AC. AB equals 10 centimeters. AC equals eight centimeters. AD equals five centimeters. Angle BAC equals 90 degrees. Calculate the side of angle, size of angle BDC. Give the answer correct to one decimal place. Okay, so what they're telling us is that all of these sides are at 90 degrees and they've already marked the side lengths on the diagram and we're looking for this angle in here. Okay, so they haven't told us what strategy we need to use. And initially looking at this problem, well, we need to find an angle in a triangle and we're not given any angles in the in the question. So the first step you need to do to find the strategy for this problem is to ask yourself, well, how can I find an angle in a triangle when they haven't given me any angles? They've only given me side lengths. And the only way to find angles when you're given side lengths is to use trigonometry. And so in the in Trigonometry, we have in GCSEs, we have the sine rule and we have the cosine rule. Okay, the sine rule says that sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. And this is useful if you're given two sides and one angle, but we're not given any angles. So the only possibility to find this angle would be to somehow use the cosine rule. So you can see here, I've recognized the strategy I need, need just by process of elimination. There's no other way I can find this angle without using the cosine rule. So there's one way you can get to the strategy for a problem through process of elimination. What is the only method I can use? And the cosine rule says, the cosine rule says that a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. This is on the formula sheet that Pearson provides. Uh, and this is all the formula they say you need to know for the exams. This is, these are the formulas they won't be giving you, and they expect you, expect you to have memorized. And here's the cosine rule on that sheet. And so this can be rearranged. If you rearrange this rule, and you may have done this before, you can get it so that the cos, cosine of A is on the left by itself and all of the side lengths are on the right hand side. So what you end up with is b squared plus c squared minus a squared all over 2bc. So you can see here we've got the cosine of an angle on the left hand side and all of the side lengths on the right. And this allows us to find the angle given the side lengths of the triangle. Okay, so Let's go ahead, so now we've recognized the strategy, I need to use the cosine rule 
to find the angle given the side lengths. Uh, then I can go ahead and start solving this. The other thing I need is Pythagoras' theorem because I need to find the lengths of this triangle. So the first strategy I need to use is Pythagoras' theorem. to find these side lengths. So I can go ahead and say that DC, uh, DC is going to be the square root of five squared plus eight squared. So the square root of 25 plus 64, which is the square root of 89. And uh, you can leave it as the square root of 89, or we might need the decimal approximation of that. So if we put that into a calculator, we get 9.434. Okay, so that's DC. And then we need the, the other sides, DB. DB is going to be the square root of uh, 25 plus 100 equals the square root of 125. If you put that into a calculator, you get 11.180. So what I'm saying is that because Pythagoras' theorem is a squared equals b squared plus c squared, a equals the square root of b squared plus c squared. Just in case I wasn't clear how I'm getting these answers, that's how I'm finding them. And then the last one I need to find bc is the square root of uh, 100 plus 64. So that's going to be the square root of 164. And if you put that into a calculator, you get 12.81. Okay, so I have the three sides of this triangle. I can now go ahead and plug those into the cosine rule. And uh, I can find the angle. A. So now just be aware that when we're plugging these sides in, it, it does matter which sides you're using. So if we call this angle A up here, then this is side A. So in this formula, it doesn't really matter which B and C are, but A needs to match up with angle A. So we can say that the cosine of A equals B squared. Uh, let's call B D C. So uh, we can say that the square root of 89 squared plus the square root of uh, 125 squared minus uh, the square root of 164 squared. Okay. So that's the top line, and then on the bottom we've got two lots of the square root of 89 times the square root of C, which was 125. Okay, so we've plugged everything in to the formula. We just need to go ahead and solve this side of it now. So the square root of, uh, sorry, the square of the square roots is just the numbers. So on the top line, we've just got 89 plus 125 uh, minus 164. On the bottom line, we'll need these decimal approximations. So two times 9.434 times uh, 11. 0.18. So on the top line that evaluates 250 and on the bottom line we get about 210.944. Okay. And then if we put that into a calculator we get 0 0.23703. Uh, so A to find the angle A, we need to do the inverse of the cosine of 0 0.23703. So the inverse of the cosine of that number 
into your calculator and you get 76.2887 about and we need to round it off to one decimal place so angle A will be 76.3 degrees and uh, that was angle BDC actually so let's call that angle BDC equals 76.3 degrees let's talk about the strategy again I just want to reiterate a few things that I went over at the start of this problem so I, I went I kind of jumped to the cosine rule first and I kind of skipped over the Pythagoras' theorem because I feel like the ascent, the deeper structure of this problem is based around the cosine rule. Pythagoras' theorem is more obvious. And why do I say more obvious? Well, it's because we're given these right angle triangles, we're given the sides, and this is kind of the first step. And I think not so many people would have trouble with recognizing this first step. But then why would you do that if you didn't already know that you needed the cosine rule to find that angle? If you don't already know how to find that angle, why would you even bother with this first step using Pythagoras' theorem? That's why I kind of say in this problem that the cosine rule is the deeper structure that you need to solve it. So you need to recognize you need to use the cosine rule before you start. You need a strategy to solve the problem before you begin the problem. Otherwise, there's no, no real point. Of course, if you didn't see you needed the cosine rule, maybe you could make a start using the Pythagoras' theorem to find the side lengths of this triangle, and then maybe later you would recognize that you need the cosine rule. Um, you could do it that way as well. But I think it, it's, a better, it's a better strategy to figure out how to answer the problem before you begin and then go ahead and use that strategy to get to the answer. That was one example of, of finding the deeper structure behind the problem and then using that strategy to solve it. Um, so I've written down some steps that you can use when you get to exam problems that you're not sure about. So the first thing I would say is stay calm. 20 to 25 percent of people suffer from maths anxiety and that can cause uh, a lot of uh, tension when confronted with problems that you haven't seen before. If you feel yourself panicking, take some deep breaths. Once you've read through the problem, you've admitted to yourself you're not sure how to answer it, start to try to recognize the strategy needed to solve the problem. Think through all of your learning. Think through everything you know. Think through the formulas that you've been taught and the formulas you've memorized. Try to pin down what topic this question is part of. Is it ratios? Is it probability? Is it trigonometry? Which topic does it belong to? Once you recognize the strategy you need to solve the problem, carry out the strategy. If you can't get step two, go on to the next problem and come back to it later. The brain is uh, a wonderful thing and if given some time it may surface up some strategy you need once you come back to the problem later on. I hope you found this video useful. I know I get this question a lot how to answer these exam style questions. I'll be going through some more examples in the future. Please visit that website that I reference SSDD problems. There's lots of good problems to go through and practice. Uh, I'll post the I'll post the practice set papers underneath this video in the description so you can go through those and practice some exam revision yourself. Leave a like if you appreciated this video. Leave a comment letting me know what you thought and subscribe if you want to see more content. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.